Yeah, what actually happened was I had a very strong, I've had a very strong desire for God all my life, even as a child. Um, but when I was in my 30s and I left the religion and was, and was basically condemned by the religion, I actually felt that I was also at the same time condemned by God, which is a similar emotion to what Tristan has had to work his way through. And so for the next six or seven years, I felt so totally ashamed of my any feelings that I had about God and, and I, I couldn't connect to God very well at all. So for that period of time, I dealt with my emotions without connecting to God. Did he connect with you? I'm sure. I'm sure he did, because as it, as time went on, I learned a lot of things through the emotional release process about God. So I had a viewpoint that God was punishing, for example, when I left the religion. But within two years, I knew God wasn't punishing. And how I was taught that lesson was when my boys just told me they would never speak to me again. I had lots of grief to experience, and I went through three or four months of grief about that. But then after I went through all of that grief, and even while I was going through it, I realised that I didn't hate my boys. I didn't want to punish my boys. I didn't want to, I didn't feel bad towards them. I didn't feel like, you know, they were to blame. And then I thought, you know, I related that to God. And I realised that, oh, well, even if I do something that God doesn't want me to do, God's not going to punish me for it. Like, God still loves me. And I still felt this deep desire and love for my boys. So. So, um, it taught me a lot through the entire process. Most of this was done alone, of course. It taught me a lot through this entire process um, that um, just about God. And so, during those seven year period where I was working through all the rape emotions, the, the abuse emotions, the torture emotions, I was also working through this issue about God, reconnecting, if you like, with God. And so, by the time by the time it came to for me to be ready to actually feel a lot of the emotions surrounding who I was, by that stage I'd already worked through all of these emotions about God. So I knew God was love and I knew God was going to love me through the process. And do you know what I mean? So that by the time I actually hit the emotions of who I was, I also had dealt with a lot of the emotions about God as well. Um, so how does God guide you now or speak with you now? Um, the way God speaks to all of us is through our emotions, not through our thoughts or, or, or through hearing. So if you're, if you're feeling that you're hearing God, you're not actually hearing God, you're actually, what's happening is God is transmitting an emotion to you and then that emotion gets translated by you and by your filters into thoughts which you then can, can hear, if we can use the term hear. So the way, the way God's connecting with me at the moment, and this is going to change soon, the way God's connecting with me at the moment is by, by the feelings. So God is leading me through feelings, and I can feel that leading occurring. And I can also feel, as I talk to groups, I can feel the channeling of information flowing through uh, from myself, but also you know, being led through this connection with God through to people. So you'll find in the end when you become one with God, you feel God's feelings and they are God's thoughts. Does that make sense? Like the truth is that God's thoughts are actually all feelings. Right? And, and when you get into a condition where you are totally open to all feelings and you are connecting to God and desiring God's love all the time, you will feel God's feelings all the time. So that's that's how God will communicate with you.